Hey guys, this is Tomek from storageweek.net. In this video I want to give you a short introduction of the Google Cloud Shell and a small demo of Google Cloud SDK. Now Cloud Shell is one of my favorite features of GCP and as you can see it's very easy to activate. It is basically a Linux environment you can access straight from the browser with all the tools you possibly might need. Well, maybe not all the tools, but there are plenty of them available and configured for you at the start. When you activate the environment for the first time, it might take some time before you are connected. But once you are in, the first thing you can notice is on what project you are working on by the unique project ID. In more complex environments, you might have a couple of different projects, so it's important to understand which one you are working on and there is an easy way you can change it. Anyways, how can you work with the Cloud Shell? You don't have to choose, I'm working either with the command line of the graphical console. You can work with both tools at the same time and use which one is more suited for the task you're doing. So for now I minimize the window, I can maximize it and I still have my session opened. I can execute some commands, uh, for example help, that's a good command to see and <laughs> to start with. Uh, you can scroll up and down from the output, you can go for Cloud Shell help to get more details about the Cloud Shell itself. Uh, there are a couple of things you can do, for example edit files or download, we're going to do it later. Build in help, that's for the shell. And as you can see, there are plenty of commands we can execute. And actually, if we execute the command echo shell to see which shell we are working on, and by default, that's bash. Of course, you can change the shell if you want to, but I prefer to stay with this one. So, one thing you can use Cloud Shell for is for your development environment. And to give you a taste of that, I will try to develop a simple HTTP server using Python. So, let's start with creating the directory for my project. Um, all right, let's see what's the environment we do have. We do have Python 2, for example. We do have Python 3. We do have Git for the source control. We do have Docker if we need that. And there are plenty of other tools we do have available, but for more details, go for the documentation. We have a couple of options at the top. For example, code editor, web preview, some additional choices like enable safe mode, boost mode, restart the machine. Uh, we're going to play with some of them, like hide, we already did, open in the new window, or close the tabs. But for now, let me open the cloud shell into a new window. It will open as a new tab, or a new window, depending on your internet browser settings. And once it's loaded, you should see all the history from the current session. Um, it's very useful when you work with the cloud shell longer and you want to have more output on your screen and you don't have to scroll all the time. Anyways, let me enter the directory I created and start with developing our Python HTTP server. So for that we can use Vim, but apparently not everyone are a fan of Vim. So let me just save the empty file and go for the other option. The other option would be the cloud shell code editor which is built in into Cloud Shell and you can access it by the pen icon on the top. And as you can see, it's really handy, nice graphical interface with the tree on the left and on the right. You do have tabs for your files, the color syntax, number of lines. So let's develop the uh, some simple HTTP server. To be honest, I don't know how to do it, but let me go for the Python documentation and find some easy example. Here is one. It's not recommended for production, but that's okay in these cases. Let me go lower and find one of the examples. Um, yada yada. Okay, we do have something. Uh, this is very basic web server saving files from the current directory. Perfect. Let me copy the example and paste it into the cloud shell with control V. And as you can see, we do have color syntax. And the language itself is recognized based on the file extension. But the editor has more nice features. For example, you can fold the blocks of code. It might be useful when you work with the bigger files, right? Uh, also, the default settings is autosave. So whenever we do update the file, it's autosaved. You can disable it easily. But for now, let me create the new file. I will call it index.html. And this will be my welcome message whenever I will open my uh, web server. 
it's called index html so it should open as default and let's put some simple h1 header this is our test welcome page created in cloud shell and yeah i think that's enough and to be honest i think that's it we do have our web server written very simple and that's actually the example from the documentation page we do have our index html so let me edit one more thing in the web server let's change the default 8000 port to 8080 because that's default web preview for the cloud shell uh, this is auto saved as well so let's run it with python 3 and my server.py and my server should be running and listening on port 8080 what we can do is now to go for the web preview and preview on the port 8080 or change the port if we chosen another one so let's preview that now and there it is our index html of course this is very simple and very basic example but i just wanted to give you a taste that um, cloud shell can be used for your development needs and even for your testing purposes uh, i just stopped the web server with ctrl c and and let's jump to another topic and another example you can always open and close the editor whenever you need it just click on the icon to open and close it you can always use the x button as well and there are some handy aliases set in your shell so for example i do have two files here index.html and my server pi and there is alias called edit that will open the cloud editor so let's try to edit index.html executing the command and the cloud shell code editor just started so in instead of vim you can just use edit and the code editor will just start if you work in the same window as the uh, console when you open the cloud editor it will automatically open into new window and as you can see you can always close the extra tab and open the cloud shell into console okay okay enough with that development stuff let's manage gcp resources with cloud shell for that we can use already installed for us google cloud sdk and the command gcloud let's start with the gcloud help to see the syntax and as you can see the syntax is pretty much gcloud group command so let's see what kind of uh, section we have in the groups first we scroll down for some uh, flags then the other flags and then the groups let's scroll down a little bit lower and the interesting group we should be familiar with is compute okay let's check out this one q to exit the help and go with gcloud help compute now we should have more details for the gcloud compute it's again gcloud compute group or the command browsing through the available options i think there should be a group called instances but let's check that instances groups templates and the, yes instances again pressing q to leave the help and go for the details gcloud help compute instances i know it's getting a little bit complicated but i just want to give you a taste of how you can look for the exact command you need so this time let's see for the commands is there anything to create the instance and and there is there is a create so let's leave this help again with q and go for the details for gcloud help compute instances create and i do have a typo no problem let's fix the typo for the uh, instances gcloud help compute instances create and enter oh boy there's a lot of parameters and a lot of flags we can use but pay attention that most of them are in square brackets which means those are optional so the only ones we have to specify is actually an instance name but we do have an option to specify much more to create exactly what we want to create as you can see there are a lot of things we can do but anyways let's try to create a simple compute instance so gcloud compute instances create and give it a name test one enter since we didn't specify what's our default uh, zone and region we are asked about the uh, zone let's accept this one and well and voila the instance is being created right now 
Uh, to prove it to you, let me navigate, navigate in the console to Compute Engine and VM Instances. And just after a couple of seconds, we already see the test one instance is up and running. We got the confirmation also also in the uh, cloud shell. So let me let me create another instance. Maybe this time let's try to use one of the flags. Uh, let's change the name to test two and let's specify the zone. But first, let me let me modify the view in the console so we actually the, see the current zones of our instances. Uh, all right, the view is modified. The current zone for the test one is US Central 1A. So for this one, let's try to go with maybe US East 1A. Hitting enter. And whoops, apparently US East 1A doesn't exist. Well, that was my bad. Sorry about that. Let's try to execute the same command with the zone US East 1C. I think this one exists. Okay, it seems this time I selected existing zone. Good for me. <laughs> Anyways, let's uh, let's refresh the view of my VM instances and test two. It's already there, and we also see the confirmation in the cloud shell. So what you can do, you can, for example, list all of your instances with the same command. It's pretty much gcloud compute instances list. And we see the output of the, with the default columns. Of course, it can be changed, or it, even you can specify the format to JSON and get all the details, and there are a lot of them. Um, since I'm working with the bash shell, I can take advantage of some of the features. For example, redirect the long output to the text file. In this case, my list.json, and once I do have the file ready, I can review it using any of the tools available for me. As an example, less to search through it. Um, all right, so that's one thing. Let's do something more serious. Let's try to remove one of the instances we just created. For that, we can execute gcloud compute instances delete test one. And I think it's a best practice to also specify the zone. So let me do it right now and press enter. Since this command will delete the instance and remove the boot disk, I'm asked to confirm that I know what I'm doing. Just pressing enter will mean yes, because Y is with capital letters. And uh, this will take a while. That's why I'm speeding up the video a little bit because um, during this time, the machine is gracefully stopped, and once this is stopped, it's, it's being deleted. Um, that's why it might take some time, and just pay attention that during this time, our cloud shell is actually waiting for the response. And later on, I will show you the other way you can do, uh, that will put the job in the background so we can continue working. But in the meantime, the machine is deleted. Let me refresh the VM instances and it's gone. All right, so test one is gone. Let's try to remove the other one. This time, uh, let's remove test two, specify the zone. And uh, once the zone is in, let's use the flag quiet, which means that gcloud will not ask us to uh, confirm and let's move it to the background with upper sound at the end. And <laughs> once again, I specified the wrong zone. You see, uh, I have to learn those one day. Anyways, uh, let me run the same command this time, specifying the correct zone name. So US East 1C. Again, quiet and upper sound at the end to move the job to the background. And we do have our prompt ready for the next commands. And if we refresh the VM instances in the console, uh, we see that test two is being stopped right now and later on deleted. And since I'm waiting for the job to be completed, let me move the cloud shell to the new window once again and see what are the other features we can use. Uh, one thing I have to mention with the cloud shell, your home directory is a persistent storage. So whenever you put in your home directory, it's going to be there. 
we can execute jobs to see what's the status of our running job and well it's still running and i do have a couple of files for example my list json let's say i want to download it to my laptop i can either use the download button and specify the full path uh, but there's other option. Uh, I mentioned previously those useful aliases, right? So to see the aliases, you can execute Cloud Shell aliases. And there's al alias called DL that will actually execute Cloud Shell to download files. So let's do it. Oh, and in the background, the job completed. That's why I see the output that test two is deleted. Perfect. But anyways, let me let me download the my list JSON to my laptop. All I have to do is just use the alias and I'm ask if I want to download this file, click download and well the file is saved on my laptop. It depends on your browser, sometimes you just have to put push extra button to save it. And what else I can do? Well the other alias edit, I can just press edit my list JSON, open the code shell and uh, code editor sorry and as you can see again the, the syntax is highlighted uh, because of the expansion of the file json it is recognized i can use the folding tool to quickly review and find the information i need so you can see code editor might be quite handy not only for the developers right anyways uh, let me close the file or actually close the whole code editor, uh, close my Cloud Shell session. And I think that's pretty much it for today. Uh, this video was a little bit longer than I intended at the start, but <laughs> to, to give you even the taste of what you can do with the Cloud Shell, I needed what almost 20 minutes uh, thanks for watching if you've got any comments just leave them below subscribe to the channel to see more videos for gcp and see you in the next one